Welcome to the second and final part of our replacement lantern video. You saw in part one where we talked about what we were gonna do, the type of lantern, the Corniche lantern that we're gonna put in place of the one that's there. And we also described briefly about how we're gonna be building the flat roof section off site, which is what we're doing right this second to enable us to do as little work on the day. We're only gonna allow one day to take everything out, renew everything, fix everything new back in. So we're talking about the roof covering, the tiling, absolutely everything. So we really don't want a wet day. So it's all gonna be quite stressy, but as I say, we're gonna do our very best. So what we've done is we've created a frame. So Ed's been busy making this up. And what it consists of, let's just move these material. What it consists of is a perimeter frame and then another frame on the inside. The frame on the inside represents the aperture, if you like, or the finish aperture, the size that will be plasterboarded up to the lantern. So what the next job is, is to produce the upstands. Now, the upstands want to be a minimum in my book of 150 millimeters at the tightest point. So we have a fall from the back of the roof, the flat roof, all the way to the front. So by the time we've got our furring piece on, I know we've got some furring somewhere, Ed. Yeah. So the furrings are around about 40 millimeters at the point where the upstand is. So therefore we want to make sure we allow for that, allow for the deck on top, which is 18 millimeters, plus our 150. So altogether, it comes to 58 plus 150, 208 mil, 208. Okay, so that's fine. That's what the furring is. It's a really long, tapered, basically like a wedge. It takes all the moisture down to the other end of the roof. The ceiling's obviously level and this forms the falls. Now what we don't want to do is make our upstand on the taper because A, it takes too long and B, it's not much point. So what we'll be doing is fixing our upstand directly to the level frame. We'll be taking these material, this material which we've just ripped down and resized and we'll offer it in position. We've got the cross members here. So this is just the bottom of the frame. We'll select it all, we'll mark it all up and then we'll cut those and we'll make this small frame up. It's like a little ladder frame, but we'll use the OSB, which will rip down perfectly to form all of the sides. And then we'll add some little finger noggins inside, insulate it, and then that's made, made up. We'll square it up, put it out of the way, and all we need to do is carry it around and put it on. So there's no work, which, you know, when it's raining, we're not worried about having the roof all open. So you all set up on that side, Ed? Yeah, mate, all ready to go. Fine, so if we, we'll break these down as a pair. So if we, if we make sure that we get them together as a pair, yep. and if they sit nicely on the bench, by the time we put them together, they'll be nice as well. So it's matching up the timber to suit the timber. Yeah. We'll get those cut down. That's the first job. These are already done. Then we need to get some OSB ripped down to 208 millimeters. So we'll use the OSB rip down to keep it exactly the same height, speeds things up, we'll screw it all together put it as a whole, square it up, jobs are good. So it was a matter of sorting all the timber out. We ripped all the OSB down to 208 mil strips. That governs the height of it all the way around the upstand. And then we just started assembling it. So you can see we're using the OSB to keep the timbers exactly parallel, exactly true, and form the upstand. So we don't make a little frame, then clad it in OSB. We use the OSB to keep it all nice and parallel nice and true and then we're able to actually get the whole upstand together as a frame if you like before we do any insulating so it's super quick super accurate and i just really like this method of construction where you can prefabricate something away from site away from all of the weather issues and all the rest of it and it's brilliant so we're putting in some extra grounds now so the upstand sits on it it will support the furring that's alongside 
the upstand. You can see me clamping that piece of timber on there. We're using a Spax screw. Now this screw is actually a flooring screw, but it's absolutely brilliant for CLS. It's the perfect length, self-drilling. It doesn't split the timber and we particularly like it. So there you can see we put some finger noggins in there. We've got all of our additional support grounds around now. And so all we've got to do now is literally stack the box together and get it all round as a frame. You can see Ed there just putting the first one together. I'm connecting the corners of that one. And away we go. And there's sort of like half an hour's work, which is super satisfying and has got it all finished. We are now up to the stage where we're going to insulate uh, our pre-made unit. We're going to flip it over to insulate from the inside out because we've got some ground and it's just a bit easier to do it from the inside out. Once we're happy with everything and we know everything fits nicely, we're going to then dismantle it and then take it over and put it together in situ. Over there. Ah. Lovely. It looks a lot easier to insulate from this side up. Yeah. We've got um, an eight mil block as well because we're going to be using gaffo tape around our PIR like normal. So we'll put that in and we'll make a list of everything we need. So that's it, first job, cutting list. Once we've got the cutting list, we're going to use the table saw for this PIR because we can use two dust extractions and get virtually no dust. And as you say, we've made up some, um, we've, we've halved some gaffo tape to actually use gaffo tape. And that's it, it's going to be pretty good. It is now insulated. You can see the insulation going all the way around in the upstand and in the mainframe itself. As I said, we used gaffer tape, so we just take an 8mm less of the aperture to fit the gaffer tape. The core niche eaves beam has been placed on top of the upstand. We have also got a overhang from the core niche to the upstand of about six mil all around because when we add our Alwitra, we want some space so it finishes flush when the Alwitra is on. We have added some cleats on the inside and removed some of the screws to make it easier to install later so it can literally just drop in. And we've also added the furring strips from this end, it's 40 mil and it finishes to about 5 mil on the full. So all water should be falling away from the house, which will help, especially when we've got three roofs coming down onto this certain bit of flat roof. So we'll just get that away now, get it packed up, ready for install uh, on another day. We're going to hit it all in one day because we haven't got much time. We want to make sure it's not going to get wet. We want to root the old light out, new light in, all in one day and covered and everything finished. So that's why I pre-built it now and we'll get ready to install it. So we're at the stage now where we're going out to site. We're gonna get all these components loaded up in the van. We're gonna to have to take all our tools. So this is one of those things that you've got to make sure you're super prepared. Let's get the stuff down through the garden, into the van and away. And hopefully the weather will be kind to us. We just need about seven or eight hours of good weather. Excellent. We're here on site. We have our main frame. We have our upstand. Um, so the plan Ed, is that we're going to obviously try to get this main frame in first. So we've designed it so it fits into the structural aluminium gutter that's there. So we're going to try and get that in there first. We can take out the insulation quite easily by just easing it out. So we can do that. And then we'll need to get it in. So that's the first job is get that in. Now we figure if we get that in before we start stripping glass off, if we do have a downpour, we're, we're not in trouble, are we? The first thing we do is get that in. Bit of insurance policy. Yeah, it's like an insurance policy, exactly. Get it in and then we can start stripping off the top and get it all ready. So we really need to go for it, all right? We've got dust sheets hanging on the inside, protecting everything. Um, and the benefit of leaving those gutters in is the fact that any rain that comes while we're working is going to go straight in the gutters and straight out. So, and we can easily cover that hole. We've got to our boiling sheets and all the rest of it. So, confident? Yeah, of course. Oh, good, I'm glad you are, mate. <laughs> all right, let's get on and do it. We decided just to take this insulation out uh, to make it easier to install. We've also put these little toggle cleat style things. So when it's up, pushed up tight, when it's over the gutter, we can turn them 
and that will hold it for us whilst we do any adjustments and any screwing we need to do as we are fixing it in. But yeah, just take these bits of insulation with the lovely gapper tape on out. We're going to get this camera set up to see if we can lift it in and actually get it in. It's going to be a bit tricky, but you know, it's actually quite light. It's no more than 20 kilos head, 25 kilos oh, the whole frame. Yeah, 25 yeah. kilos the frame. So it's CLS, it's nice and dry, nice and strong. So we'll have a go at that now. So yeah, so we're going to come in. Yep. We've got to come, if I just pop the steps out of the way here, so they're out of the room. We've got, we've got enough to get past that thing there. I think we, what we need to probably almost do is come in and shut the door. Yeah. So the door's not in our way and then we'll be fine. Yeah? Yeah, come in straight, yeah, okay. So to shut the door, I think we just turn this switch Into off Back to where it was, yeah. yeah. So if we take this right in first, and put it as far on this side as possible. Now what we also need to do, that's it. Now press, get the door shut. Okay, so basically, um, we just got to get it up into the space. We've got enough space to rotate it here and then mm. start working our way down, yeah? Okay. So I'll need to pull out the steps in a minute. Right, so let's just give it a go. I mean, I, cannot, I can't reach that high, but it's lovely and light, isn't it? Yeah. So what's your, what's your door control? And just get it sort of like this. Yeah, now keep it lower than the, lower than the aperture and then I'll push it up towards the end. Now, that's a start. So now basically it can sit on that end while we work on this end. So if we get the steps, you come and hold this in. Come and hold it, sort of, you need to hold from. Yeah, I got yeah. it now. Right, I think we'll just give it a little knock. I've got my rubber mallet. I'm just gonna go out and get that, all right? You all right for a minute? Yeah. I can't let you in. It's all right. <laughs> I can so leave it open now. Laurel and Hardy sketch that. Yeah. To the top. That's it. Right, okay, so I'm going to get the steps and just try and ease. Get my end up, yeah? The middle will go. Yeah. It's wherever we're on. Right, this is, this is easy. It's because we're on a bit of an angle, that's all. Yeah, nice. Right. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to come and give yours a little... I'll tap mine up a bit more. Probably going to get looser as we get mine to the Mine can go. Yeah, I'm up. Are you in? I'm in. You're joking. That's dreamy, isn't it? Right, now we need to just keep pushing it up now. Yeah. If you push yours a little bit, that's up your, that's it, keep going. That's enough, it's fine. Now, I'll push mine up and turn my toggles. Yep. This end first. Relax, relax. One. Two, and I'll get the other, the other end. That's dreamy, hey? It's toggle chip. Have you done yours? Oh, mate, you just... That's dreamy, hey? That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> nice one. Boom, mate, that's good. Well, this is what carpentry is all about. So I measured something. We drew a rod left and right, didn't we? Yeah. I checked the rod fitted before we made it. You made it what from the rod. So that's how, if you use, you know, th th that sort of process, mm. you've got half a chance. Now, I think we should get some fixings in that quickly. Yeah. Just so we know it's secure. Then we can start taking the glass off. Once we had that frame all nice and secured round through that structural aluminium gutter that you can't actually see at this point, we started to get all the glass out and all the old lantern out. And it was literally a race against time because it's now about half past nine in the morning and we've only got ourselves the day sort of to do this to make sure we didn't have any catastrophes or any water rushing into the building so it was a matter of getting all of the glass out safely we used glass suckers passed it all down one piece at a time uh, you know there was no issue with that i had to then unwire the lights sort of isolate the electrics get all the light fitting out of the way make that all safe because they sort of wired it up from in fact it went outside the fascia board as well there was a bit of exposed cable so we had to make that all good once that was done and safe we were able to unscrew the lantern pass it down and there we have it we expose 
the existing um, gutter that I'm now walking around, which is super solid, and start getting it all together. So we've stripped the roof light off now and we've cleared some tiles. We are now clearing out the gutter. We're keeping this gutter. This is a lovely aluminium gutter and it's really strong so we're just going to keep it there because there's no point getting rid of it. It's helping our structure massively. We're cleaning out the existing gutters that were failing and we've got so much stuff. Tommy, hold that bag up. We've got a bag full of leaves and crap already and that's only just halfway around. So we'll clear that out, start again. We're going to put our furrings on lay RSB down and the boys are going to membrane over that. Yeah, so what you might want to mention is the fact that this gutter will no longer be a gutter. No. Because our OSB is going to come up. Shoot over it. And our membrane is going to come up under the tiles, so it's completely accessible yep. and serviceable, maintainable. But, as Ed said, that is such a nicely made insulated gutter, incidentally. It's thermally broken and it's beautifully solid. So what we've done is lined it with our frame got our upstand on. Simon is here, he's, our, he's the Alwitra king. With Tommy, he's the Alwitra prince. prince. And they're gonna crack on and do it. So we're gonna go and cut the ply, get it all fixed down, and hand it over to the guys while we clear up and move everything, eh? Yes. So we went back round to the workshop, which incidentally is very close to the job, fortunately, uh, with a cutting list, and we'd measured every single piece of OSB that we needed. So we had like the end of the roof, the two sides and the bottom and everything had to be cut on the taper because we were splaying it over and sitting it on the upstand of that really nice aluminium gutter so it was a matter of making sure we knew exactly which piece was which which piece married up which ends to leave square so which bits to leave square and then i was there busy cutting away with my ts55 festal and it just gave up. This is the moment where it just gave up after 17 years of use. So we quickly switched to an alternative saw. In this case, it was a battery saw, which was a little bit more difficult to be fair, going through 18 mil OSB at 45 degrees. The blade was dull, admittedly, but it was a little bit more interesting. But there you go. So if you're interested to know what happened to that TS55, there is a video on the channel and I will leave a link above as well. So that was it, we got round there, we got as quickly as we could cutting all of those pieces with all the right tapers on and everything else to race round and start getting it all laid onto the roof and we pick it up where we've just about nearly fixed all of the timber work ready for Simon who turned up to do the Alwitra before we get the lantern on. So this is just the last few bits that we've made up and then we are ready to go. So we've made up all of our deck boards here. They're all tapering and splayed to fit the balls inside there. Now Simon's got the job of getting it all covered in now. Poor thing, he could have started at least an hour ago. Would have preferred that on a Friday. But there you go, that's how it is. Ed's just got all the boards in. So Simon handing over to Simon now, doing his magic, and then we're in business. So we've taken delivery of the Corniche. This is how it arrives. The glass, all the components, really well packaged. Um, and we've got to do now is sort them out, get them into the right order of uh, assembly and that's it. Guys are getting all the tiling down, they're retiling all around the bottom now, they've got their Alwitra membrane all bonded down, welded together, and it's looking so much better, especially the fact that they can actually walk around where the skylight will be. And that's something that was a real problem before because there was no way, because the tiles and the glass met each other and the integral gutter was completely covered. You couldn't clear it out. So all of the sort of debris was falling through leaves, rotting down, filling it up and eventually overflowing, which is always gonna be a problem. So we've created um, at least enough space to be able to lay a roof ladder up, walk all the way around, get to the chimney and everything else. And I just think that's a much more sensible thing to do. So that's it. The guys have finished covering the roof and they've retiled all the way around the eave, which is really great as well. So we've got a lovely upstand going all the way back up. I've got a nice space to walk round the lantern now, as opposed to what we had before, which enables people like window cleaners to come up. It enables people to come up and maintain the roof the chimney and all the other important things as well. And indeed, we've still got a lovely bit of light going into this boot room below. So it's all really quite good. Now, 
I've just got the little job to do to put in the lantern now. I've done a few of these core niche lanterns before. They are super simple, but they're, they're such a well-engineered product. Here is the box of parts, and I'll open that in a second. And now this is how all the components come, including the ring beams, which I've unwrapped. Everything is super well wrapped, delivered in couriers. In the box of parts, you get your installation guide and everything's very straightforward. Something to note if you've done these before, I've just noticed that the bolts have been changed. So we've got three replacement bolts. So the old ones were threaded all the way down. They had a dome head. These have got a parallel flange head and they are partially threaded as well. And I think that that was something that was just basically an improvement. People are always improving products. And then it's very straightforward to follow and put together. As I say, I've done a couple of these before. You always get packaging contents, eaves beam, ridge, hips and rafters. Eaves beam is obviously what I called the ring beam. So this is the eaves beam here. That's the first thing I install and once I've got that together, I will carefully turn it over and I will place a silicon bead. The silicon bead goes in a particular position and all the way through the underside of the mitre. Once I've done that, I'll turn the eaves beam over. It's fairly straightforward. And obviously keep that parallel and square to my structural opening there. So that's it. I'm gonna get all that done. Then I'll unwrap the other bits, put it all together, bring the glass round, get the glass in and We've beat the rain. We had rain forecast for today, but last night we got the rain early, fortunately. Now, we would like to have done this a bit earlier on, but trying to get everyone to commit to a booking on the same day. So Simon, who's uh, really helpfully come along and done all the Alwitra for us. Obviously, Ed and I are working together all the time. We also had time, had needed to have time to make all the components. We made all the components in the workshop, so that was good as well. So that reduce the amount of liability or time that we need on site. So let's get on now and get the lantern in. So in the box of parts, the first thing I'm gonna find are these corner brackets and these simply slide into the section which joins everything together. And once they're slid in, that holds everything obviously nice and square and true and gives us a little bit more help. So like everything, mitre, just let's line the mitres up, simple as that, so we'll get these round. And then once we've lined all that up, believe it or not, we use a cable tie. And that actually can completely holds everything together. So we'll slide that in there, pop it in there, and get the other end done. So that's the part that simply slides into the corner. So that immediately holds everything nice and square for you. And then once you've lined all of the mitres up exactly, so you know you're somewhere near it, then we're gonna take, as per the instructions, we're gonna take those cable tie to hold it. And obviously once the whole frame's together, you know that everything will be absolutely solid once it's fixed down. So these are, these are basically to hold it. So we're just gonna pull them up somewhere near where they should be. And then I'll go around and make sure everything's nice and true and square before we give them a good tighten. That's it, perfect. That's nifty. We should use these more in carpentry, I think. Joining stuff together, you'd be, be quite straightforward, wouldn't it? Yeah, they really do ratchet everything together lovely as well. Quite a good, quite an amazing bit of kit, really. You can really line the mitres up nice as well. That's perfect. So that's held those mitres together beautifully. So you can see the cable ties through and you can see how nicely everything's held together. So now it's a matter of turning it over and getting the silicon in place. And I'm gonna apply a generous bead of anthracite sealant. It's a really good quality sealant this. It's um, still got some flex to it. And there's an actual groove just the other side of the screw line. Now that's where we get the bead. And we also go all the way through the mitre, basically there. Then we come all the way down here. And this is a bedding sealant. This is the only sealant we use. Put a lovely joint of sealant on there. Cover all that in there. All the way along this joint. And the sealant gun runs real nice in there. And I reckon about I think I've got about a seven or eight mil bead there. 
and that just allows it to sit onto your roof covering nicely. It's on the outside of the fixing line, so the fixing line is towards the inside of the building. And away we go. It's really straightforward. A good quality sealant is super important. It's worth getting out and getting some in good time. Because you know, this is basically going to stop all the little bits of air getting underneath and it's going to hold it down as well. So now the next job is make sure that your upstand's nice and clear, clean, dust free. And I'm going to set my frame over the top equally. Now it's still only got the temporary ties holding it together. So I want to just be as gentle as I can be with it. So I come to the middle. I know it's going to be sitting right on the edge. So I can do this. I can, this is easily manageable on my own, this small lantern. And I can just carefully set it down like a door, just spreading it out where it needs to be, there, and dropping it on. Now, like all frameworks, it's good to make sure you're sitting nice and square. Square meaning all your corners are at 90 degrees. So recheck those mitres have held nice and securely and in line. Yep, that's great. And then what I like to do is measure the diagonals. If I measure the diagonals, they should be exactly the same. And I want to keep that like that until I screw my screws in. So we go there. We go here. That's absolutely square now. That's quite important, I think, for getting it all to work out nice. Then we can look at how we sit on your upstand here. Are we sitting evenly both sides? And indeed, it looks really, really nice. So the next part of the install, I have got the hips. I've just got four hips and a ridge here. And of course the hip caps and the ridge cap, which we'll use once we've got the glass in. So it's a matter of putting this together. And now it's a basically a slot together job. It's fairly straightforward. Um, and you just got to line up the bolts and the components, put it together. It really does hold nicely. And then we lower the whole thing into the frame and join the bottoms to it. So it's really nice and straightforward. Here are the hips. There's four hips, obviously, to that into this end. Four caps for the hips and the ridge so I've cap. I've assembled the ridge and the hips. I've got them into the seal, if you like. And I've attached those. So it's super straightforward. The bolts and everything that comes with it is just perfect basically and once you've done that and you've bedded it and it's all nice and flat straight and level square you fix it down using the screws that are supplied by Corniche they're a pan head they're ideal to screw straight down through the seal into the subframe and hold it down if for example the flat roof covering is uneven where it's lapped and joined make sure you shim it and keep the frame or the seal nice and flat okay the eaves beam needs to stay nice and flat if you pull it out of uh, straight for example you may have a bit of trouble when you put the glass in now that's my next job i'm going to start with the two little end ones here uh, it's fairly straightforward so on the end of each of the glazed units you have a very nice uh, section which basically gets uh, pushed on with a rubber mallet and you keep it nice and central and then this is what actually connects everything together it's a very very clever bit of kit so we're going to get on get that on and show you what that's all about so the glass let's take the first of these now the glass has units have stickers now the stickers indicate which side should face the room it's really important because in our case we've got a self cleaning film on the outside so we want to take off all of the little blue pads and then we're going to put on the bottom section okay so the inside that's the outside okay so with the sticker on the inside i can see that i've got a very similar amount either end and that's a good start okay and then it's just a matter of pulling it onto the unit rubber mallet and it's a really nice fit you can hear when it's up and it should be parallel that's key it should be parallel okay so that then 
is basically slotted in. Nice positive connection and that holds it exactly where it wants to be. Now we're just going to repeat that process for every single piece of glass. So a little tip when you're putting on the bottom section. So I've got my glass with the side that's facing in towards me. Okay. And I'm then taking this section here with the gasket and the section that locks into the sill or the eaves beam. And all I'm going to do is just literally hold that on and make sure it's exactly with the corners. Cause what you don't want to try and do is slide this backwards and forwards once you've actually got it in. So I've got it held at an equidistance from either end of that nicely produced unit. Then I'm just going to roll it until I get the edge to catch. And then it's just a matter of easing it on. Okay. Now in good British style, I have a little bit of rain, but it's nearly there. And as I said, there's no silicon in the installation apart from the bedding on. So it's not like I can't do any siliconing. Now I can ease that backwards and forwards along its length with a rubber mallet. I think the weather's being good to me. It's nice and warm. Everything's sort of, you know, moving nicely. And then that's ready for final positioning. Now, when you're positioning, you basically want to take the unit, put it up against the ridge, lower it down. And then there's a section here, which is going to lock in to the sill or the eaves beam. So I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to carefully place the top. Again, looking at it's up against the ridge, but nice and true, and then lower it down and it will just literally locate itself. I mean, isn't that super, super simple? And they're so well engineered and put together. I mean, very rarely do I get excited about making something or doing something, but when you've got a product which has been so well thought through, designed, packaged, making the installation for me out on site. I mean, for the end of the day, it started raining. I'm not panicking. I know I'm all right now. All I have to do now is get the last of the parts out, which involves some friction fit dowels that hold a cap on. And then we've got some nice cover fillets. So it's a really straightforward job. Let's get those done now. I mean, check this out. This is how the parts are actually packaged. I mean, it's just brilliant, isn't it? I mean, look at that so well packaged so well sort of looked after so it's just a matter of now is putting all of the sections in so this is the ridge cap and this is a a tap fit now what it says to do is get it equidistance again it's just good experience to look down and see in my case i'm going to keep this section here the same distance off both ends to that so i'm going to pull it that way and that's about right now it's not going to take a lot to push that on okay check the gaskets are all perfectly in position and you can click it on so once it's on you can tap it with a mallet left and right but it's nice to get it right first time so i've got that nice and true then the next job will be to put on the hip caps so they then clip on as well these have um, like a slot so you know they're the right way up okay so the bottom has a slot for another fitting so you know that when that is at the bottom you're in the right position that's it so again keep that flush with the bottom and push it on and it's as simple as that there's no fighting you know these things just go together amazingly Whoever comes up with these designs and then makes this stuff is absolute genius if you ask me. So with, with the bottom and click. What a positive fit. Beautifully secure as well. I mean, this is just design and engineering at its best. If I had to choose a top product of the year, this year it would probably be the Corniche. Oh, I just hear that. So satisfying. Right, okay. So we've just got to put the top caps on. Again, nothing to it. No mechanical fixing. It has got this beautiful engineered aluminium 
darts which will press into those sections there. So what we need to make sure is that we've got cover there and they are going to go straight on. And that is an absolute dream, if you ask me. So we're going to make sure it's got cover, drop it on. Oh, that is so satisfying. I mean, seriously, that is so satisfying. Fine, okay. So now all we've got to do is put the hip end sections on, which consists of a really neat little section here. Now these, believe it or not, have been engineered with a plastic, how can I put it, a barbed plug, which holds them on. And once you've put those on with the barbed plug, you then slot one barbed plug into here and the whole thing pushes on. Again, no concealed fixing. So we'll get those on now. That's the last job then. Then I can start doing clearing up and going home. So these basically clip on underneath here. We take a small, I'll show you the fixings. It's a clever bit of kit. We take this now. There's three of these per corner, two in that little section and one in the actual hip end fitting. So it also locks over the top. I forgot to take out the temporary cable ties. So they are a temporary, a temporary thing. So they come out now anyway. So I can put those out. And then we're going to tap these in. Super clever, super, super, super clever. Then we're going to put one in side here. I'm going to slot that in there. And it's interesting that it's on a slot because you need to pull it onto the top of here and then you're going to tap him home. And that is absolutely spot on. So that is the job complete. Now it's been a pretty epic day. And as I said at the beginning of this piece about roof lights or roof glazing, it's really important that you factor so many other things into roof glazing, especially rainwater. We're, be we're becoming a country that is going to get excessive rainfall just as in other parts of the world and in this case we've got three roofs all cascading down onto what was a beautiful lantern if you like or roof glass but there just wasn't enough places for the water to escape it had a really nice gutter but the glass was touching the tiles it was filling up with debris and after a few years that filled up and the water just cascaded and came straight in what we've done is completely redesigned it. So we've got a proper flat roof with an Alwitra membrane. It's a, it's a welded membrane, so it's homogenous. So once it's welded together, it becomes one. It comes right the way back up the first couple of courses of tiles. So it's got a really good upstand. This will take a lot of water. Now talking about upstands, we have got an upstand for this roof lantern and it's no less than 150 millimeters. So at the rear of the roof, at the highest point, it's 150 millimeters. And at the front, because there's a fall, it's about 180 millimeters. And it just means that if something blocked up, if this was in parapets, for example, the water is not going to fill up and go over the top. Or if you had plenty of snow and the snow was higher than the lantern, it's not going to thaw and make its way in. So that's it from me. The job's finished. The lantern's in. We've got an upstand. We've got a really nice serviceable edge that we can walk around. The window cleaners can safely clean the windows. We can access the roof slopes for maintenance. And so I just think that's a much, much better thing. Now, yes, we've reduced the glazed area, but the light it allows into the boot room below is perfect. I mean, it's um, we've got less metal because the last one had a lot more rafters than this does. The core niche is a really beautiful, sleekly designed. You've seen it go together. It goes together perfectly. I've installed this single-handedly. All the other guys had to go home and it's been an absolute dream. So thanks for joining me. If you're in the market for roof glazing, check out the core niche. It's a professional product and it has been designed 
with ease of installation and quality in mind, and I think that's not bad.